Howdy, I'm Denzel. In this video, I'll be going over a couple methods to doing texture switching inside of Blender. Though a bit of a disclaimer, a lot of the information in this video is actually lifted from these other tutorials, so be sure to check them out too. They cover a bunch of other information and methods that I don't cover in this one. They're good stuff. However, for this video, if you do find anything useful, then consider supporting me on Patreon. You get your name in the credits, early viewings to things, and updates about future videos. But I know you came here to see node graphs, so I digress. Let's go make some. So for this first method, say we have our character's face textures all hooked up the way we like, but our character has multiple texture files for different facial expressions. We like to be able to animate them by swapping the textures themselves. How do we do that? The simplest method can be done by just changing the image type from single image to image sequence. We can then change the frames from 100 to however many textures we have. In my case, I'm working with 16 eye textures. But also in my case, the start frame isn't the right image. So I'm just gonna tick this up so I get my proper starting texture. Now if we keyframe this offset value, it'll change which texture gets loaded in. This works because this image node is just looking for similar named files from within the folder it's from. So if we wanted to add more faces or options, we can do so by just adding more textures to the folder. However, if you have an asset that has other texture files that also might need to change, like a mix or normal map, manually keyframing three separate nodes quickly becomes inefficient because this node doesn't have any kind of value input to drive the offset. However, you could connect a driver to it, and that can provide the same type of functionality. But also, just a side note for drivers inside of materials, if you plan on using Blender's linking and library overwriting system to, say, make a rig in one scene and reference it in another, you won't be able to use drivers to edit material parameters unless it's all made local. At the time of recording, this type of functionality isn't yet supported inside of Blender, so, you know, just be cautious about that. This next method is conceptually kind of the same, except this one involves actually switching between two or more imported textures. Say we have three or more textures that we'd like to switch between. Our first step could be to just add mix nodes and play around with their factors, but I don't want to have to animate multiple sliders to change my face. We will, however, plug our first mix node's output into color one of the second mix node. Now we can see changes from the first mix node with the second node overlaying on top of that. Now we just need to automate this a bit by using some math nodes. If we set it to greater than, add a one into the threshold and connect it to our first mix. Now if we type in a one here, it'll show us our first map. And if we type in a two, it'll show us our second. If we want to incorporate our third map, we can duplicate this math node, change its threshold to a two and plug it into our second mix node. Then if we add a value node and plug it into the value for both the math nodes, we'll now have a little working switching system. And then you can just scale this up for however many images you'd like to use. You can do this for your color maps or your mix maps and your normal maps and all your maps. Though the biggest caveat for this method is it requires you to have to import all your textures. It's fine for cycles, but Eevee has a cap of how many nodes it can compute. If you add too many, you'll get this pink rendering error. It's also heavy on your scene and a bit cumbersome to reuse, as it requires you to have to manually change every texture if you want to reuse the setup. I mean, you could probably script some Python script or something and like do some automation or something. So then why would you use this? Uh, because you can. Put it in a fancy node group with tidied up connections and a slider and you too can now intimidate people with your graph networks. This last method is more efficient in some ways, but just as laborious in others compared to the previous method. It's far lighter on your scene, but also requires a separate application. Why, you may ask? Because we'll be putting all of our textures in a row and building a system that lets our models UVs slide across it. I'm going to be using Affinity Designer. It's not a photo editor, I know. It's a vector illustration program. I use it for pretty much all my photo making needs, but any image editing program will work fine. Because all we need to do is import all of our textures, align them into a row, and then save it out. Back in Blender, we're gonna import that texture and we're gonna be making another switching system, but this one's gonna be vector-based rather than math-based. We're gonna start by adding in a mapping node. Be sure to change the type here from point to texture. And then we're gonna change X here on the scale to essentially the number of textures that we have within our file. In our case, it's 16. Connect this to our texture, as well as add a UV map node to tell it where to go. 
And this is pretty much all you really need to get it working. You can just add in whole values into this X location here and it'll shift its UVs down the line. Honestly, I don't really know how useful this next bit of information is, but, but we're gonna do it anyways. We're gonna make a slider, bring in a value node, and this will be our slider. But our value node has a decimal point, and we wanna snap whatever number's in here to a whole value. We can do that with a math node set to snap. This will just round up the value to the nearest whole number. You don't really need this so long as you're diligent with what you type in, but it can help make things less problematic in the long run. Next, just add an invert node and a separate XYZ node and hook them together. We gotta add an invert or else it won't behave the way we're expecting, but if we take the X output and plug that into the location here, now we'll have a system that will slide through our textures. Now you can hook this up to a driver or a bone system or whatever you want. This method works fine for Eevee and seems to look the same as the previous in Cycles. The only thing you really have to worry about is if you scroll through your textures fast enough, you might see some hints of misalignment. But overall, I, I think it's easier to manage than the all nodes method. And those were the three methods that I used throughout my productions, slash the ones that I found most useful with inside of Blender. You're free to mix and mash aspects of each together. No one way is the best way. They all have their pros and cons. It really boils down to what works best for your workflow or your project. But that's about it. I hope you found this video useful or hope you found information in this useful. Uh, if you are by chance curious about how to do this in Unreal Engine, then I have a tutorial on how to do that somewhere around here. Feel free to check out the Patreon. We got some pretty good stuff over there too. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching.